Let's turn to India now. The top headline is election results. These were regional elections for legislative assemblies, one from Jammu and Kashmir and the other from Haryana. And what's the verdict? In sporting terms, it is one all. The Congress and the National Conference have won in Jammu and Kashmir and the BJP has won in Haryana. It's their third victory in a row. And within this scoreline, there are many stories. So let's take a closer look. This was Kashmir's first election since 2014, also the first since Article 370 was removed, the article that gave Jammu and Kashmir special powers. It was scrapped in 2019. So the election campaign this time was framed around that issue. The BJP said it was a masterstroke, scrapping Article 370. The opposition called it a betrayal. Let's look at the numbers now. The National Conference has won 42 seats. That's the party of Omar and Farooq Abdullah. They were allied with the Congress Party and the Communist Party. The Congress won six seats. The Communists got one seat. So put together, this block, this opposition block, has got 49 seats. Now, to put that in context, the Jammu and Kashmir Assembly has 90 seats. The majority mark is 46. They've got 49. It should be smooth sailing for the NC and the Congress. Omar Abdullah is expected to be chief minister again. And what about the BJP? Well, they have won 29 seats, all of them in the Jammu region. But we'll come to that later. You see, this victory is, is a very consequential one. Just look at the NC manifesto. They have promised to work towards the restoration of Article 370, basically to restore special powers to the state. They also want to modify or cancel laws that were passed after 2019. Of course, 370 is the center's domain. The state government plays no role or no part in it. But it does set the stage for an interesting period ahead, possibly one of friction. Nonetheless, let's look at the big takeaways. First of all, democracy has returned. We did not see any violence during this election. No one's complaining about the results. And that's what ultimately matters. Peaceful and fair elections. That's a big, big win. Secondly, the hardline elements have flopped. Dozens of separatists have joined the poll free as independents, including allies of separatist leader, engineer Rashid. He's in jail for a terror financing Justin. case. But he was granted bail to campaign. Even the Jamaat e Islami had fielded candidates in this election. They were all expected to make an impact, maybe cut into the vote bank of the national conference, but clearly they did not. Only seven independents managed to win this time. And the third big takeaway Jammu and Kashmir is a story of two regions the, the Kashmir Valley and Jammu. Just look at this map. All of the BJP's wins are in the Jammu region, which is largely Hindu-dominated. All of National Conference's wins are in Kashmir, which is Muslim-dominated. And this was the case in 2014 as well. The BJP swept Jammu, and the PDP, or the People's Democratic Party, swept Kashmir. This time, the PDP is nowhere. They've been reduced to just three seats. Even Party Chief Mehbooba Mufti's daughter, Iltija, lost her seat. It looks like their voters shifted to the National Conference. Still, the NC is asking the PDP to join their coalition, sort of like a show of unity. And that is a story from Kashmir. The Abdullahs are back in power. They have traditionally had good relations with New Delhi, but this is post-370 Kashmir, so let's see how it goes. Which brings us to the second state, the state of Haryana. The day began with celebrations at the Congress headquarters. Early trends gave them 60 out of 90 seats. It looked like the Congress may oust the BJP in Haryana, that too after 10 years in power, 10 years of the BJP rule. But close to noon, the numbers changed. The BJP raced ahead of the Congress, and look at the final tally. The BJP has won 48 seats, which is a shade over the majority mark of 46. And the Congress has got 37 seats. It's a remarkable win for the Bharatiya Janata Party. A, because no one really gave them a chance. Most exit polls predicted a Congress win. And B, because it's a victory against anti-incumbency. Like I said, the BJP had been in power since 2014. No party had won three consecutive elections in Haryana before this. So the odds were against them. The BJP managed to improve its tally, not only win, but improve the tally. They won 40 seats in the 20, 2019 election, the last election. This time, they've got 48. Now, the Congress is not happy about the shift in numbers. They're talking about foul play by the Election Commission. <laughs>
और जिन बैटरी जिन मशीनों की बैटरी 99 परसेंट थी उन मशीनों में नतीजा एक आया हमें हराने वाला नतीजा आया और जो मशीनें नहीं जिनको छेड़ा गया जिनकी बैटरी 60-70 प्रतिशत जो स्वाभाविक या होनी चाहिए थी उसमें हम जीत रहे हैं हमारे कैंडिडेट Well, the complaints, I'm sure, will be investigated. But frankly, it's a losing battle. You cannot accept the system in Kashmir and question the same system in Haryana. It's a clear double standard. The Congress should rather introspect. They were set to be in pole position in the state of Haryana. So how did they mess it up? A lot of factors are being talked about, including infighting in their ranks. You see, there were three chief ministerial aspirants in the party, in the Congress party, Bhupinder Singh Hudda, Kumari Selja, and Randeep Surjewala. It's a situation that inevitably backfires. But let's also look at the bigger picture. What do the results in Haryana mean for Indian politics? Again, three things. One, it's a speed bump for the opposition. They were flying high after the Lok Sabha elections, despite losing. There was talk of a Congress resurgence. A victory in Haryana may have added momentum to those conversations, but now questions will be asked. The Congress had a direct face-off with the BJP in Haryana. They had issues to capitalize on. And their leader, Rahul Gandhi himself, led massive marches and rallies. Yet they lost. Secondly, it's a big relief for the BJP. In the Lok Sabha, they suffered setbacks in northern India, in states like Haryana, Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Himachal. But this result shows that it's not a free fall, that they can still turn it around. And finally, number three, it sets the stage for elections in Maharashtra. That's the big one coming up. Maharashtra is the richest state in India. It's currently ruled by BJP coalition. Let's see how that one unfolds. First Post decodes the U.S. election. Explains how America chooses its president. Your primer on the race to the White House. Everything you need to know about how America votes. And its global implications. U.S. Election Explained, every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.